Hello and welcome to Detroit Performs. I'm your host, DJ Oliver, and today I'm at the Birmingham Bloomfield Arts Center, which has been connecting art to children and adults in the Detroit region since 1957. The center also offers art classes, exhibitions, and other creative experiences. First up in today's show is Detroit native Carol Harris, who manipulates fiber and thread to create her beautiful quilted works of art. I love beautiful fabrics. I, you know, love the feel of them, the smell of them even. All my quilts, I feel, are my children, and I have no favorites. Each one, when I'm doing it at that time, is my favorite. I grew up in Detroit. I've been here all my life. First fiber work I can remember was embroidery. My mother taught me embroidery, and I can remember going to the five and ten cent store to um, buy those embroidery floss. But it looked like a color wheel to me. I, I, that's my memory of it, you know, all these colors just lined up one next to another. So I think that's kind of where it all started. And right now, I'm working with hand stitching and embroidery a lot, so I'm going back to the very first kind of uh, stitchery that I ever, ever learned. You have three layers. That's what makes a quilt, a bottom, a middle batting, and a top and you stitch those three together, you've got a quilt. Now, how you, what you do with it after that is where the real creativity comes in. I like to work with color. I like a lot of color. But every now and again, I will challenge myself to do something in, with no color, black and white. I get a lot of joy out of the making, how I uh, put these pieces together. Now, it's all very random, but they should work nicely together. I don't want to place one that's got, because I'm trying to create energy and rhythms, I don't want to create one that's very much like it right next to it. So this doesn't have the same kind of dynamics or dynamism as, say, this one does. High contrast, very high contrast. I love music and I like the rhythms of music. I try to recreate high energy and the flow of music sometimes in, in my work. So I often am inspired by everything around me. The inspiration or the, the final product often does not necessarily reflect literally the inspiration, but it's just a starting point. And uh, for me with, with fabric, it's always the fabric that, that is the beginning. And you know, I'm never really at a loss for ideas uh, because I have all this fabric around me and I can just go to it, pick one up, and, or it will call me and I will pick that one up and it will be the beginning of something and that's how work starts. So I, maybe we want to do, want it to go together in a sort of a, a chevron, a chevron pattern. The series that I'm working on right now is a great departure for the kinds of quilts that I made for maybe the last 30, 40 years. They've been uh, uh, sort of inspired again by looking at these houses and architecture. And I don't want to say ruined porn, but you see the marks that time has made on the landscape, whether it's natural landscape or uh, man-made. And uh, those marks are very beautiful and they tell stories about the lives of, of those buildings and the people that have used those buildings. And I liked what the layers revealed. So I am now making holes and in, in things so that you can see the layers. So the layers reveal something else. And then layering pieces one on top of the other in a way that you can see more than one fabric, each fabric being a part of a, a story. It's kind of like an, an onion, you know, you peel away, you keep peeling, keep peeling each one. Each layer is a little bit different than the one preceding it. I think of them as artifacts, and it tells a story of time and identity sometimes. I think that art is a collaboration between the maker and the viewer. And I make it, I may be thinking one thing and I see, but my experience is totally different from yours. And so what you bring to it is going to help you in interpreting this work and responding to it. Maybe it's telling your story. You know, maybe uh, there's a layer that's a little bit fancier than what, was, than what you see on top. 
I think the thing that I'm mostly saying is don't always be so concerned with what's on the surface because that's not the whole story. That if you look beneath the surface, whether it's people, buildings, whatever, there's a lot more that's being revealed than uh, what you see at first.